Hey y'all, today I'm showing you what I made for dinner for me and the hubs. Baby, when you love come home from a long day's work, go ahead and surprise them with something real good. Maybe I made some beef stew, aka carne gusada, some fried plantains, a salad, and some corn. If you want more meal inspirations for you, your hubs, your lady, whoever, Baby, go ahead and check out that ebook. I'm going to give you some good meal ideas in there, and you know the recipes are super flavorful. Now, right here, I have two pounds of a chuck roast. I've cut this up into about one inch and a half pieces, and I've seasoned it with some Cezanne, some Cezanne Tropical, some browning. I have some beef bouillon, garlic, thyme, and flour. That flour is essential because it's going to help thicken up that gravy and also it's going to help it get brown, you know, paired with that browning that we have put in there. You want to mix this up and then you want to have a cast iron skillet. I'm using my enamel cast iron today, warming on about a six. Then I'm going to go in there with some oil and you want to let that get hot, okay? Because if you don't let it get hot enough, it's not going to brown your meat well. Now, technically, I could have done this in two batches, but baby, mm -mm -mm, I'm doing that today, all right? So I just went ahead and put it all in there. I let it sit for about four minutes undisturbed. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to mix up my meat, and I'm going to let it sit for about three more minutes undisturbed. You're going to see that eventually the chuck roast is going to start springing for some juices. That's what you want because you want it to start making its own gravy before you put in some water. Now, of course, you want to add some aromatics as well as some to add a good flavor. So I'm putting in about half of a large onion and also some yellow bell pepper. I love those colored peppers because they have that sweetness. You want to let this saute in total for about four minutes because it's really going to dissolve down and really make that gravy taste chef kiss, baby, okay? Now that my peppers and onions have sauteed, I'm then going to go in with my garlic and some cilantro. That cilantro is going to just perk up the flavor of this stew, and it gives you a little something different than the typical, you know, southern beef stew. Next, I'm going to add in about a fourth of a cup of some plain tomato sauce. This is going to add a nice body to the gravy. I've added about two cups of water into my seasoning bowl. I'm going to put that water in because you know I don't want to leave none of that flavor behind in that bowl. I'm also going to be adding some bay leaves, fresh oregano, and some celery. And I'm going to cover this initially and allow this to simmer for about one hour on medium low you want to check it from time to time to make sure that there's enough gravy in your pot if you need to add more water you certainly can now let me know how you would feel if you came home from a long day's work and baby this meal was waiting on you honey i feel like these type of meals just give you that brain food you know that can just be a motivation to stay out there on that grind getting that hustle let me know what you think. Now, it's been one hour, and as you can see, my gravy has thickened very nicely. And now I'm going to start adding in some potatoes as well as some carrots. I don't like too many potatoes, so I'm just adding one potato and two carrots today. The carrots are going to add a little bit of sweetness, and I'm adding some extra peppers because I want them to sort of perk up and freshen the dish. I am going to cook this for 25 minutes. At that point, the potatoes should be tender and the carrot should be tender, but definitely not mushy. I needed about one cup more of water because you know those potatoes are going to really absorb a lot of water. I also went in and added a bit more salt just to my taste. After 25 minutes, my potatoes were nice and tender, but I definitely needed to go in there and get out all those little twigs. Y'all, my husband complains so much. If he sees those little thyme and oregano twigs, he'd be like, girl, what is this? So I went ahead and picked all those out. Now, I have these kitchen calluses, so y'all know the pot can't burn me. But if you don't, go ahead and just use some tongs to get out those little pieces. And you have some delicious carne gusada. If you try this recipe, baby, let me know what you think. Now, to pair with this, I am going to be doing some easy corn. Since it is not the summer, the easiest thing to do is to just get some frozen corn on the cob. And I like to go in there and cover it with some hot water from my kettle and just let it sit for about 10 minutes and a little salt water. And you should be good to go. 
I'm also gonna fry up some plantains. Plantains are similar to bananas, however, they are starchier. The one I'm using today has some brown spots on it because I wanted it to be a little bit sweet to pair with that really savory beef stew. And I'm just gonna fry these up for about two minutes or so on each side until they are nice and golden brown. Will you not just devour this meal? Honey, this is that natural melatonin, okay? You don't need to take no sleeping pills eating like this. You just have this, they'll take you right out, honey. You get your tender beef stew with your rice, corn, plantain. Of course, you got a little some green on there. Honey, you know I love you and Jesus loves you. And I'm going to see you next time at Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye and God bless.